Hey, this is Alex with the Cast Fly Shop. I'm here today to do a, it's kind of like a Dally's tailwater jig or a weighted Frenchie. Um, what we're going to start with here is this U660BLBN comp jig hook. One of the best values in jig hooks that we have right now. You get 50 of them in there, which is pretty freaking awesome for guys like me. Um, they, they run about 12 bucks, something I really wanted to kind of mention in this video. Um, I really like the hook, has a nice shank on it. We're going to use a 532nd slotted gold tungsten bead, peacock eye stub. For the collar, here's our tail, Cock de Leon, the speckled Unconchado. Um, you can really use any of them. I don't really have a different, any reason to use different ones. I just always use that one. So let's get started here. Um, I'm going to take 0 0.015 lead wire. You can use lead free if you so desire. I'm going to do about 10 wraps here. And no, I don't count them. If you want to get wily and do that, you can. I just do it to secure that bead in. I'll pinch. And I am going to wrap away from myself. Come back up. And continue going down. Trim that. Grab this little guy here. I usually just kind of favor one feather until it's kind of all the way gone. Keep it on there so it doesn't all fall apart. I'll start pretty close down. Like I even like some of this kind of fuzzy stuff here sometimes. So I'll use a little bit of that in this. So yeah, this doesn't take very many here. I'm gonna I go about the length of the hook shank, and I'll actually go a little longer on some of these kind of nests where you use this stuff because it just the stuff's so buggy. And it looks like pretty much any kind of like mayfly pattern. Like if you ever just kind of look at them on the bottom of the river, I mean they're kind of that color and have that kind of cool speckling to them. Um, we also sell these in the full skin. Um, that whiting makes them. It's something I would also consider checking out if you do tie a lot of flies because it is an incredible deal. It's like, the tailing packs are pretty good too. Yeah. Alright, if you haven't seen this, Hairline has kind of taken over uh, UTC's wire, or I don't know if they've taken it over, but they have their own kind of thing going on. That's the brown soft wire. I use this because it kind of looks like that pheasant tail brown. That's kind of all we're tying here, just with wire. So what I'm going to do, is take about 9 inches of this here, cut it in half. Then I'll tie each piece individually on the hook kind of together and it to kind of make your body uh, make it more uniform it'll look a lot better because you could roll it over but then you'll just have a really big um, kind of space where it just doesn't look as clean which the fish won't care but I do so I don't grab that fly um, so we have those two wires coming out I'm gonna do a third one and this is kind of like acts as your ribbing wire so just regular brassy copper. And I'm using uh, medium for the brown and brassy for the um, copper part. You can use both the same size. And we'll tie that in as well. And I'm not folding my wire over. Most of the time when I tie a fly, I do to lock it in there. But I'm trying to conserve space. Because we don't have much real estate on this hook. All right, so we got our three pieces of wire there. So I'll kind of grab them, put them all together, run my finger over it, and so they're all kind of uniform. And then I'll start wrapping away from myself. With all three? With all three. And what you can always do is, if it's not tight enough for you, is bring that thread back here and kind of get them all together. So then we'll do that. Run your thumb down it too. This look nice and together. All right. This color combo here kind of looks like a '70s rug or something, but it's all right. The fish will like it. I'll do 
do one more wrap. And yeah, the stuff kind of does want to get braided up on itself. Um, for it to look nice and clean, you just have to be patient. Okay. Um, anytime I tie off wire, I like to wrap my thread around it a couple times. And I'll bring it up like this. Now normally I just rip it off, but we don't have that option. So take your crappy pair of scissors on your tying table and cut this stuff. Do not use your nice ones. But I mean, you can if you want, but wouldn't recommend it. Um, I'll trim that and then I'll kind of bring it and bend it again so then it kind of stays out of my way. Um, last but not least, but for the collar here, I'm going to take some iced up peacock. And anytime I take this stuff, like for, I mean, this is a size 14. So, I mean, that's quite a bit of hair. Uh, most of the things you'll see in the bin, I don't know if people either tear it up like this, which is what I do, is like I'll just literally pull all the fibers apart. And so, and then when I go to dub it, it's smaller, and it just doesn't, I find it to kind of make it a little more durable on your fly, so it doesn't just, you know, because if you just tie it in one big kind of wad and it bounces up on itself, it just doesn't seem to stay together. But I have no science behind that. Just experience. Okay, so just like that, it doesn't take much. That's a perfect little collar there. Just gets the idea, and this is pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do is take a couple wraps here, and then just two or three to secure it. And I'll start whip finishing it. And it just makes a really, like, I like my collars and everything to be pretty sparse. You really want this thing to sink. That's the whole idea behind all this wire. You know, this is really good for a hopper dropper rig, pretty much spring through fall. Especially around here on the Mackenzie, but it'll work on whatever waters you'd use Frenchies on. Pull that off, and that is it.